And what's going on? Fontaine here, VIPSoundLab.com, and I'm back on Machine 2.6.6. And don't mind me here, I'm just still getting some things loaded up. All right, so the reason for this video is because in the last video we were running too long, and there was two important little tips that I forgot to uh, put in there. I'm not going to say forgot, but you know, the video is just running too long, so I figured I'd break it up into two videos. So this is going to be more information, you know, so it's going to be a really quick video, you know, not more or less a tutorial. So one of the things I wanted to show you was, all right, here's your, um, your section arranger. Okay. And here's your idea view. So another cool thing is let me jump on the slice and chop suite here. And what you can do is you also can load kits on the fly by, you know, just dragging and adding it on a group like so. I can see right there, the kit loads up. I think in the last video in the comment section, uh, there was a few comments more or less along the lines of, uh, What's the difference between just clicking in here and dragging it on here? You know, I would, I don't know, man. I mean, to perhaps in the future they're making, uh, maybe for the touchscreen, maybe this has something to do with that. You know, perhaps saving space, you know, making it really easy dragging onto a group. I would imagine, you know, I don't know, but it's just another workflow, you know, just to make life a little bit easier. All right. So I loaded that kit up, you know, I'll just, uh, right click here and you know, maybe make a color assignment like this or something. All right, so there you go, really easy to just load up a kit really quick. Another dope thing is you can hold option and drag, and it makes this little, you know, green little plus sign, and you can duplicate a group by just dragging over like this. And I did notice when I was like, how I'm duplicating these groups here, if you hold down option and drag, if you let go of the option button, see how that, Okay, like this is with the option button held down. If you make a mistake and let go of the option button and you still see that little square box and you go like that, it doesn't duplicate it. So when you do do it and you see a little white line up here, make sure that you don't release the option button too quick like how I'm doing here or I won't do anything. You have to make sure that the option button is still held and you still hold the option button and then let go. And that's when it appears. I noticed that. Okay, I was doing that. And I'm just gonna take these off right quick. Another tip you might want to be mindful of is when you're um, creating scenes. Also, they get keep in mind that they get stored in your uh, in this idea view here. Uh, in comparison to the arranger section here, like you can you can erase patterns here. Okay, let me give you an example. I'm gonna put scene one here. Let me go back over here. Let me just make a couple of dummy patterns, just so you can understand a little bit better. I'm gonna uh, make some little dummy groups here with nothing in it. Just putting things like this here. Okay. And then let's say if I'm over here in the arranger section, okay. And I'm just going to add some scenes as I'm doing here. You know, just for fun. You know, just some dummy scenes, scene 1, scene 2, scene 3, and scene 4. Okay, and when you do duplicate your scenes up here, it will uh, go up in a corresponding manner, like here, same pattern one, pattern two, pattern two, pattern three. Uh, you can adjust that in the preferences. Uh, let me see, that's under file preferences. If you did want to uh, duplicate your scene, it's under the under the uh, default here, scenes and patterns. If you want to link when duplicating uh, sections, you can highlight that section there, and it'll actually it'll make like a perfect uh, copy. For example, if I go here to scene five and make a copy here, what's going to happen is it's going to be exactly the same. Now these are linked. So when you're making your uh, changes on the fly, in other words, if you alter the pattern here on pattern two down here, it's going to, you know, alter this one too on the fly. So if you're the type of producer and you don't want to uh, make your adjustments on the fly, you got to go back to your default preferences. And that's how usually I usually leave mine and turn this off. Cause I'm more meticulous. I like to go in there and, you know, do everything on the fly. Now, back to the point, I'm going to delete this scene here, remove, I'm going to remove that, remove this, remove this, and I'm going to remove this. And then let's say if I just want to keep scene one, what happens is when you're over here, see it still stores everything in here. 
everything still stays locked up in here. So for whatever reason, if you're deleting here, it's not going to delete here. So you want to be mindful of that. So, you know, if you want to make changes over here, you got to go over here and delete these guys off like that. And I know you guys are more familiar with that, but I'm just mentioning that because there are people who are new, like brand new. You know, some people it's like, yo, I'm getting overwhelmed with that or they don't understand that. And the ideas view, it's just to get your ideas. It's like a, um, it's like an audition mode. Maybe that would be a good way to explain it to you. You know, just think of the ideas view as audition mode. Audition mode, meaning you're just testing out, you know, how a song potentially could sound before you actually commit it to the sections here. These are your sections. And your scenes, the only thing they do is they just um, arrange your, uh, your patterns with the little looper here. And this is your little looper icon here. But we have detailed videos on that where we go really in depth into that. So, all right. So, without going into uh, further detail, the other aspect, well, I'll tell you what, let's do one more example. I'll drag in and drop in a kit right quick. You know, I'm just bugging out of the kit. And in case you're wondering what kits I'm using for this, this is the Slice and Chop Suite. You guys can pick that up on www.vipsoundlab.com. You know, because we have a lot of independent sound designers that we hire. And, you know, trust me, man, some banging, banging kits, man, if you guys want to really get in there. This one's more of a sample-based kit, um, more or less in the lines of maybe like the Street Swarm, you know, that vintage vibe, digging in the crates feel. That's what this kit right here is about. And again, just to review, option, drag, you know, if you did want to make a, a, a duplicate kit, you know, then perhaps, you know, over here, you might want to, you know, I don't know, make some changes. I'm hitting the return button, but I'm staying here. I'm trying to reach the... Maybe I did an alteration here or something. Or maybe I just wanted to just reset these ones here. And keep these ones here, you know, for whatever reason. OK, and the last little tip that I wanted to mention was you can actually uh, manage your product library now. From inside a machine, you notice down there you have a manage products uh, icon here and you click that. What it does, it takes you to the uh, native access window. There it goes. And then you just put in your uh, your password or whatever, and then you just log in and you can manage your products. All right. So that's pretty much it. Again, not a really long tutorial, not much to it. Again, just, you know, some information and some quick tips. All right, so that's pretty much it. Your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.